Madhurandak Deva along with his retinue and Vandiyadeva entered the city of Palayare. The procession passed through the areas where the soldiers live, such as Aryapata House, Bombaypata House, Pudpata House, Manapata House etc. Then it passed through the shopping streets, residential areas, temples, shrine streets surrounding the temples etc. Here and there a few stood at the doorways and watched. But Vandiyadeva saw that there was no enthusiasm among the people. The first time he had entered the city, the city was in an uproar. Now the streets were crowded. It was almost a ruined city. It was clear that the people of Old Aray did not have that much faith in Madhurandak Devar. This was in a way comforting for Vandiyathevan. As they were approaching the ancient palace road of the Chola kings, they saw Parayathor's procession coming from the other side. An open palanquin was coming in the middle of the procession. It was not clear who was in it, but it appeared to be Shivanadi and the young Prayathan. The crowd was large before and after the worship. Some people were singing in front and behind the palak, making a sweet jangara sound with tamalas in their hands. Interspersed with Trikiridam Balamharaharamakadeva. With slogans of Thirunarayur and Live. Long live Arudsalvar of Palab Pilayar. The slogans also rose up in the air. Madhurand Hagar saw the procession with eyes full of sorrow. Looking at the hero from the side, he asked something. Yes, Tirunarayur Nambai is the one who comes in Palaka. He replied. Still, what a hassle. We will find no one in this town to listen to us. Are the people making such a demonstration around this Nambai? Said Madhurand Thakdavar. The procession passed a short distance from where they were. However, one of the people who came near the Palak appeared to Vandiyathevan as Virasavar, who had fought with Alvar Kadian when he had once crossed the Kalata River in a boat. Madhurand Hakativa and his retinue reached the palace road and reached the mansion of Sembian Mathavi. The big brat was standing at the palace gate. He seemed to be waiting to receive someone. Madhurand Hagar got down from the chariot and went near the mother and bowed down. Mother Akamyakandu blessed Madhurand Hagar who worshipped. Son. You have come at a good time. Tirunarayur is coming. If necessary, make some difficult repairs and come to the Sava Hall soon. He said that. Vandiyadevan noticed that Madhurand Hagar's face had lost its radiance. Pity. Madhurand Hakar seems to have thought that the great bratty was waiting at the palace gate to welcome him. What disappointment! When he found out that he was only waiting to welcome Shivanashir who was coming in procession behind the palanquin, Madhurand Hagar, who was hoping to ascend the Chola throne tomorrow, said, Is it natural to be so disappointed? They all went to the area reserved for Madhurand Ha in the palace. Madhurand Hakar was casually doing things like changing his clothes. It does not seem that he was so interested in going to the Sabhamanda Pam. People were coming from mother one after another. Finally Madhurand Hakar left. When he left, he asked, Where is that gentleman? He asked. Vandiyathevan, who was rushing to go to the hall with him, said, Here I am ready. Taking him and a few others, Madhurand Hagar went to the Sabhamanda Pam. The congregation was already assembled in the hall. On one side sat Sembian Mathavi, Kundave Prati, and some court ladies. A young man was sitting on the pedestal which had been placed in the middle of the assembly. He is a young man. Vibhuti Rudraksadari, whose face was radiant with weed. In front of him lay some traces of grass. He was also holding a straw in his hand. Beside him stood an ecstatic Vibhuti Rudrak Shadari. The hall was still full of people. Vandiyadeva saw that the youth was the one who had come in the palanquin, and that the person standing next to him was the same person he had seen earlier in the Kalatata boat. His eyes wandered around the Sava hall, but finally settled on the face of Kuntheve, who was sitting next to the elder Prati. Kundave Devi's eyes showed signs of astonishment when she saw him for the first time. Then the eyes of the princess did not seem to turn towards him. He even doubted that he did not know himself. When Madhurand Hagar entered the Sava Hall, other than the ladies stood up and paid their respects. 
When Mad Hurand Hagar sat on his pedestal, the others also took their seats. Sembian Mathavi looked at Mad Hurand Hagar and said, Kumara. This young believer is from Tirunarayur. He has received the full grace of Palab Pilaiyar of Avar. He has got some Devara Pad Hikam which no one has found so far. Once upon a time Mangayarkarasiya, who rose in our Chola clan, became the queen of the Pandima country. Heeding his call, the man Pilaiyar Nanasambandar went to Madurama city. There he defeated the Samamas in the Battle of Veda. At that time in Madhuramanagar, he has got some of the hymns sung by Sambandha Swami. When I listen to those songs, I get excited. If your father had heard it, he would have been very happy, so you should hear it. Madhurand Hakar said, Listen, mother. Let the Batikam begin. But his face was not so bright. His heart was elsewhere. Thirunira did not like the fact that an ordinary boy wearing a rudraksha was placed as the centerpiece on a big pedestal. He sat patiently to satisfy his mother. Tirunara Nambiander Nambai, who was blessed by Palab Piliyar, traced the leaf in his hand and started reading. When Nanzambandar saw the city of Madurai, he said, Isn't this the place where the great Mangayarkarasi lives for the wealth of Shiva Bhakti? He first sang the hymns that he was amazed at. Tears of joy fell from Sembian Mathavi's eyes when she heard the songs. He was filled with joy as he thought about the previous birth privilege that he had been given to live in a clan that had such a kingship and lived as a queen. In the above songs for Madhurandha, only the line Manilam Prana Mananal Manyam Mani Mudik Kulan stuck in his mind. He was enraged when he thought that another person was usurping such an ancient and glorious jeweled crown of the Cholas to adorn his head. Samba Ndar goes to see Mangayarkarasiyar. Pandimadavi looked at the Balagara and said, Oh! Where is this young child? Where are the giants like Brahma giants? How can this child fight and win with them? He worries that. Knowing that, Samba Ndar looks at Pandimadavi and says, When Tirunarayur Nambiandar Nambai sang the Batikam, Sempian Mathavi used himself as the Manga Yarkarasi and Nambai who sang the Batikam as Nana Sambandar, forgetting the memory of this world. Madhuranthak Devaro said, Yes, I am a young brat. But I will not be afraid of Thiruko Valar Malayaman, Kajum Valar Bhutavikrama Kesari, and the sons of Sundara Chola who have received their support. Just as Samba Ndar had the grace of Alava Yaran, I also had the help of Palyavetare. He thought that. Vandiyathevan's ears did not hear any song. His eyes and thoughts were fixed on the goddess. Did the younger Braddy not know him at all, was he blind even though he knew, or was he angry that he did not tell him immediately after completing the task he had agreed to do? His mind was thinking like this. Also, he was thinking how to meet Ilya Prati alone and tell him the news. When the songs were over, Sembian Mathavi looked at the elder who had come with Nambiandar and said, Sir, if you look at this young boy, it seems like Nanzambandar himself has come back incarnate. Take him and go from place to place in Tamil Nadu. Collect the divine Devara Pad Hikams available there. You should compile the upper Pad Hikams, Samba Ndar Pad Hikams, and Sundara Murthy's songs separately. Dot singing should be done daily in all the temples. This is my husband's wish. I wish to see it fulfilled in my lifetime. I will arrange for all the civicas, men, and equipment you need to go from place to place. I am sending a message to my son asking for the emperor's permission. Said.